Okay, so I've been getting a lot of questions recently, um, especially on my last couple of videos um, about why I use Bitwig specifically as opposed to a different DAW. Um, now, I have shown the power of Bitwig, I think, pretty well by making songs out of silence and stuff in it. Um, but you can do that in any DAW. Um, I just want to show in this video a couple of things that I like about Bitwig and why I choose to use it. I'm not going to go massively into detail in anything that I mention. Um, if you want a follow up video on something that I mentioned more specifically, more in detail, then I shall do that. But this video will probably be an hour long if I go into detail about everything. Um, there's a lot of great videos on YouTube about why people like Bitwig. Um, I think it's good to keep making them because then when people search for the DAW, um, they can see that loads of people really like it and they might want to use it. So, um, the only disclaimer I want to make is I'm not going to go too in detail on stuff like the dual sequencer. I'm going to mention it, um, or stuff like the browser. I'm going to mention that as well, but I'm not going to go too into detail about it because I feel like pretty much Everybody mentions that um, and everybody kind of knows about it, but I will mention them. And that's it. Um, like and subscribe if you like the video. As always, um, there is Bitwig content on this channel all the time and there is general production stuff. So the first thing I'm going to talk about really quickly is the dual sequencer um, or the dual sequencer if you're not from Ireland. Um, this is the same as what you've got in Ableton. So here in the mix section here, you've got your clips and scenes and you can drag your scenes out into your arrangement and you can create a little arrangement here where you play through loops. And that's great. Ableton does that. It's nothing new. Um, Bitwig has this mode where, um, you can just have it in your arrange view as well. So you have your clip launcher here. Right, that's cool. So you can do the same thing here. It's just beside it, which is slightly more convenient and enjoyable. Um, the thing that I like especially about this is if you're say recording um, traditional material, like say you're recording yourself playing the guitar or singing a bit or something like that, you can say you record it onto the timeline here and you know you wanna do another take, but you like that take and you wanna try something different, you can pull that over here and store it here. Or if you bounce something, you can have your track be a hyper track that plays MIDI and audio. You could um, turn, say, a MIDI thing that you have into audio and you could store the MIDI over here. Um, you can use it as um, you can use it as an arranger, you know, to, to test out arrangements and stuff like that. You can loop certain things from here and also have your arrangement plan. It's just a really good way of working. Um, there's a million different things you could do with it. The main thing I use it for is if I do like a bunch of recordings of stuff, I'll try out different ideas, or I might have something in the arranger here that I like, um, but I want to change it a bit, so I'll store it over here, so it's out of my way, and then, you know, don't want to go too into detail on that. I feel like people pretty much know about that. Uh, the other thing I want to touch on very quickly is the browser. So, the browser is sick. The browser in Bitwig is the best browser there is in at all. I'm making that claim. The reason for that is you've got these smart collections. Again, I'm not gonna go too into detail on how you work smart collections or how you set them up, but you can set up these smart collections. I've got a pretty basic one set up here, um, but you can set it up to be way more granular. You can have like all your delays in one um, and you can have all your synths in one. But the thing about this is you can set them up with parameters. So you can set them up with parameters here and then you Anything that you add, so if you put a new VST and it fits those parameters, it will just automatically go in there and you don't have to sort it. Then you've got these other ones here, just your regular collections, and you set these up, name them, and then you just drag whatever you want in there. And, uh, you know, you can have one for your sense, one for your sampler, whatever. Um, so that's cool, and you get one of those for, like, each of these tabs. So your presets, your devices, your multi-samples, your samples, your music. Um... Uh, none of us make any of that. We just uh, mess around in the DAW and don't finish things. Um, <laughs> so, um, you've got that, the collections element, which is very cool. Uh, the other thing you've got is like a pretty insane tagging system here. So, so let's say I come into a new track and I want a preset that is um, a, a drone and it's... Um, 
uh, I don't know. It's a vector stretched, and it's made by Christian Vogel. So we've got one here. Boom. Great. Sounds pretty much like what you would expect from those tags. Uh, the great thing about it is when you're saving your presets, you can save, well, you know, new tags. You can use ones that exist, or you can create your own, and they can come up under your name. And uh, it's just a really good way of sorting things, and it works very well. I don't want to talk about the browser too much, because there is a lot of videos on the browser. The browser is sick. So, that's the browser, which is sick. Um, the browser might actually be Bitwig's best feature. It, it's 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 really good. Like, it's, it's something that where I think when you... When you start off, you don't think that a good browser makes a good difference, but it, it really does. So, the next thing that I want to talk about is audio editing. Um, audio editing in Bitwig, I think, is is really good. Um, it's, it's not so much that I think you can achieve more than you can achieve in, say, Ableton or something like that with Bitwig, but I think that it's just really super intuitive and easy in Bitwig. So... Let's say that you've got this audio clip, right? And let's say it was a vocal and I wanted to, you know, the vocalist was a bit out of time or whatever. So let's say that the person sang something here and it was just like way out of time. Doesn't even sound like music, but I, the magical producer, I'm going to fix that. So in here, if you hover over any of the, um, uh, if you're above any of these, you know, sound waves, I guess here. It's going to give you a handle every time that you reach an offset. So there's an offset. So we could drag that over, say that wasn't in time, drag that over there and fix it up. So it's really, really easy to do stuff like that in Bitwig. And then there's, so that's like your simple basic editing that you'd be doing all the time. It's super intuitive. You can have lots of layers of stuff where you can fix it against each other. You can use this to put audio into a groove really easily if you've got like a groove and you've got another audio sample, you can stretch it really easily with a groove if you use the layered editing. Um, it's just really good. So let's talk about more destructive editing or more like creative editing, I suppose. So uh, let's say that you want to do like, I don't know, some crazy edits in here. All you do is just, you know, select something and you can do micro edits. You can go super granular with this. I mean, like down to like, to the point where you can turn this into a tone really simply. So, you know, that's pretty easy to do. I might just, uh, let's just extend that out a bit because it's very quick and I want to show you something with it. So let's do that. And then let's take this here and let's do that. Okay, so we've got that. And let's just solo this so we can hear. So you can do, a, you can turn something really quickly into this glitchy mess. Now, the other thing that is is pretty cool is how you can achieve really strange effects really quickly. So let's, um, let's for a second, just forget about this end part here. And let's just select all of these clips. So with these clips, we've got, see, see down here where we've got the pan and the pitch, you've got like a histogram on these, it's the same with the gain, but we're not gonna touch that just cause uh, it might get a bit messy, but you've got this histogram here. And what this allows you to do is you can stretch out, um, it's basically a way of uh, humanizing it, but you can use it in extreme amounts to create creative effects. So let's say we want to spread out the pan here randomly among these clips. So let's uh, spread, spread it out like, like super a lot and, you know, make it all like that. So, so now the pan, the pan is going to be like super randomized, randomized for each clip, clip. Right? right? And, and let's, let's say, say we, we wanted, wanted to, to do the same with the pitch. So, so we, we can, can take, take this uh, pitch, pitch and, and let's increase the spread of the chaos, chaos here. So to make it more crazier. And there we go. And let's see what that sounds like. So yeah, you can do pretty crazy stuff with that. So beyond that, obviously you can do, you know, editing like that. Um, and that's not, you know, unique to Bitwig. You can do that and everything. It's just a case where I think it's really intuitive and pretty easy to do. But let's say one thing that is unique to Bitwig in terms of how clips are managed is the stuff that you can do within here. So we've got this sample and we've chopped it up. 
But the other thing that we can do is we can bring in a bunch of samples here. So let's say we want to bring in that clap and toss it there. And then we want to bring in, I know, this clap as well that we don't listen to. And then we want to bring in this uh, chunky clap here. And then we have changed up our sequence and we've got multiple samples in there. Right? So we can then edit all, do crazy edits to all that stuff. So let's take this second clap here and let's just micro edit that. And same here, let's just do some weird stuff. Right, so now we've got this. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now we can do stuff like automate the pitch. So let's automate the pitch, which again, you know, you can do the, all this stuff in, in other DAWs. It's just super intuitive in Bitwig. So let's say we want to pitch these samples kind of randomly. So pitch that up and down and up and down. And then let's just make this go down. And let's pitch this steadily upwards. Do a more dramatic pitch bend there just so it can be more hearable. So now we've got a bunch of pitch stuff happening here. We've got multiple samples that are being edited and that's all in the one clip. So, you know, we can copy this out and maybe make a slight variation to it here. Uh, let's just go back to the stretch here. Uh, let's make a different kind of a glitch in here. Let's make one that's like super, super in there. Uh, let's duplicate that out a bunch of times. Okay, so now we've got these two variations. So that's pretty hard to do in another DAW. In another DAW, you'd have like a mess of stuff happening there where you've got a bunch of samples layered on top of each other, whereas you get to keep it all in one clip here. The other thing that I like is that you can also take, say, an effect. So you could take an effect like, let's say we want to put a filter on here. And let's add some sort of third party effect like um, a reverb or something like that. Right, so now we've got these effects on here. And let's just change up that filter over time here in the clip. So. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to edit that filter frequency here in the clip. So see, I'm in the clip instead of the track. I'm editing the clip and I'm doing that for a reason. So I'm going to take this filter frequency and we're going to just mess with it a bit. Right. So and now let's uh, automate our Valhalla here. So I'm just going to automate the mix over time. Let's just bring that into automation mode down here as well. Now I've got the reverb mix. So let's just bring that like I don't know, way up here and way down here. That'd be kind of normal for a while and then like wash it out at the end. Okay, so now I've got the filter and I've got the reverb automated on here. So you can see the power of the clips. Now what's exciting about this is that you can take one of these clips that you've made with all this automation, with multiple um, different samples in here that are being edited and pitch shifted. And we could even, you know, change the mode that they're in, you know, if it's a, uh, the stretch modes or elastic or slice, which all sound great and you can do crazy stuff with them, but you can select all of that stuff. And then all of that stuff resides in this clip which you can then save into your clip library. So you can just drag it over here into your clip library and let's call it like cool uh, clip 69. So now you've got cool clip 69 that you can put into your, uh, your clip library and you can have as many tags as you want. So let's say that it's a dirty, dry, wet, broken four by four acoustic, heavy, smooth, atmospheric, epic, wonky clip, okay? And then whenever I search any of those words, it's gonna come up. So let's hit okay there. And then let's load up cool clip 69. So here it is, cool clip 69. I can put that into one of my collections, you know, if I wanna make, you know, um, the coolest clips 
um, clips that 69, whatever I want to call the collection, I can set it up to be whatever I want, you know, and organize it how I want. But here's the cool thing about clips, okay? So this clip now contains all of that information. So if I've got this saved and I can preview it in here. It's got everything in there. It's got the third party effects that I used. It's got the multiple samples. It's got all the edits I've done. It's got the pitch automation that I've done. It's got the, the stretch algorithm that I selected and that's all saved into this clip that I can use in any track that I want or I can save it and use it later and you know, make a bunch of these or whatever. So it's like these late loops that contain so much information that you can then use in your production. So I drag that in and I've got it here again. If I, if I unsolo the other track. So, you all love that. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is how Bitwig extends the functionality of stuff that you already have. Okay, so I've got FM8 in here. So FM8 is an older synth and it has, you know, its own modulation matrix and stuff that you can go into here and you can map things out. And um, that's great, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but, you know, maybe this modulation matrix isn't quite as intuitive as some modern synths that you use, but you still like FM8 and, you know, you want a better workflow for it. So in something like FM8, we've got this power here where let's say we want our filter to work. So let's add the filter here in FM8. So now I've got my filter active here. And yeah, the filter in FM8 has access to LFOs and stuff, but let's say I'm using those for other stuff and I want, you know, that to have its own LFO. So we can add an LFO here from Bitwig and let's make that control the cutoff frequency here. But let's say we also want to add in a reverb here. We want the dry wet to also be affected by that LFO. And let's also do some FM here. So, so now we've got this FM amount from E to F. And let's control that with that modulator. And now let's add in an ADSR. Let's use that to control D here. Okay. Probably not going to sound that good, but that's okay. So now we're using this. So what's the advantage of that? Well, first of all, some synths don't have, you know, very much modulation possibilities at all. You can have pretty much as many as you want within Bitwig, so you extend the functionality in that way. The other way is, is that a lot of the time you want to use, you know, external um, effects and stuff like that. But the downside is, is they don't act the same way that they act within a synthesizer. You don't have as easy of control over them. You've got to automate them by themselves. But with FM8, let's say I wanted to put in a bit crusher here. Now I've hit this arrow and this arrow for all intents and purposes makes every effect that you put through it basically a part of the synth. So now I'm going to add this bit crusher and I'm also going to add some third party effects. So let's add Coral here by Native Instruments. And let's add I don't know, something else. Let's add um, Volcano 2 by Fab Filter, right? So now we've got all these. Which is cool. But now we can use these same envelopes that we're using to control stuff in the synth to control stuff that's out here. So let's take our coral here and let's increase the number of voices and let's use that same um, that same ADSR envelope that we're using with an FM8. Let's control a few things here on um, on this as well. And let's control this filter here within Fab Filter. Let's actually use another um, ADSR for that. And let's control that filter. Let's change that up a bit. Let's say we want our phaser within FM8. Let's turn the phaser on in FM8 here. So let's go to effects. Uh, let's get our phaser going. 
Let's turn that dry wet up. Turn the rate to zero. And then let's control, say, the sweep. That's no, probably not gonna do anything, but that doesn't matter. We just matters that we can do it. So we've got that phaser sweep minimum here. Let's control that with the same ADSR. So that's cool. You know, it's it's almost like extending the functionality of the synth. Say you don't like, you know, the reverb in your synthesizer, you can use it here and you can have the same modulation control that you would have within your synth. Uh, the other thing that's good about this is that you can now save this entire thing as a preset. So I can go in here and say, save preset to library and I can call it um, cool, uh, that's boo, cool synth uh, 69. Um, uh, point two. And that's, you know, going to be a preset now. And we can say that that's a fast, slow, hard, soft, bright, mono, poly, mod sequence. That's digital and noisy. Okay. That's how it feels to me. That's how I'm going to tag it. And then let's say I want to add my own tag up here. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of some of these and say they're too specific. And let's add, uh, I don't know, um, 69 as a tag. And then I can save that. Okay. So let's enter there. And then I can go, okay. And then I can go into my browser if I want to load it up again. And I can go to um, my presets and we can go to everything and I can use the tag 69 and there I have it. My, and it's made by me, Garen. And there's cool synth 69.2. And I'm gonna open that up. And that's got all that stuff saved in there, you know? Um, which is pretty cool, okay? So. The other thing that's good about this is, you know, I've used it there to add a bunch of effects and stuff like that. Let's say you just have a synth that you wish had an extra, um, had an extra envelope or an extra LFO. Throw it in there and just hit save as default. And then when you open it as your default preset, there's going to be an extra LFO set in there. Maybe you just want some macro set to it. It's pretty cool. Um, so that's another thing that I really like. So... Let me see, is there anything else that I want to cover? Um, the same thing is true here where, you know, I've got some chords here and I've got, you know, those effects that I set up and any automation that I set up, drag that into the clips library and I can save that whole thing. The last thing that I want to talk about is the actual effects and instruments within Bitwig, which I think are criminally underrated, okay? The concept of Bitwig is a little bit different to your regular DAW. So in your regular DAW, they give you a nice sounding compressor, they give you a, you know, a pretty sweet sound and distortion, and they give you a nice reverb, and you're happy with that. Bitwig is a bit different to that. So everything, every effect that you have in Bitwig is quite simple. And the, the interest part of it is really up to you. Now there are presets. Um, the one thing that I hear people complain about constantly is the reverb. And there are a lot of tutorials showing you how to make the reverb better. But let's say that we had, um, let's just add some uh, instrument here. I don't know which one I'm gonna add. Let's just add a polysynth, okay? So we've got a polysynth here. Let's make, make it play these chords. Now let's say we just wanna make like a little pluck sound. Let's add some note effects. The note effects are great as well. I'm not gonna to get too into those in this video, but um, they are really good and you can stack them on top of each other and put them into, you know, parallel and do crazy stuff with them. But for now, let's just go with this. And let's make a pluck sound here with polysynth. So now we've got this. Now let's put some unison on that. Right, so now we've got this sound, okay? And we wanna add a bit of reverb. So we immediately add the reverb for our Bitwig. And maybe it doesn't sound exactly like we want it to sound. Let's make it like way bigger. Let's slow down that. But what we can do in here is the reverb's got like tank effects, wet effects. So let's say we thought the reverb is too bright. Well, we can put a bit of, um, let's put a bit of an EQ in here. So let's throw EQ plus in here. Let's say we want more mids in the reverb. Um, we want to cut out some of those lows. 
and we feel like it's a bit too bright so let's cut out some of this high end maybe just reduce it and then we want to modulate it a bit so we add some chorus on there and you know maybe we want to even put a little bit of a delay in there and get weird and then let's say we want to put a vocoder on all that just to make it sound even weirder weirder so now let's take the mix off on that and let's take this stuff out of there so now listen to this reverb we've got Now we can even add modulators to this. So now we've got this really weird sound and reverb. So generally what I do to make the reverb sound good is just add like some chorus on there, add a little bit of EQ to taste, um, and it sounds better. But you can do all sorts of weird stuff with the reverb as well. You can turn it into like a shimmer reverb, you can turn it into like a weird filtered reverb with loads of delay and stuff going into it, whatever you want. And in that sense, it sounds a lot better than, or maybe not sounds a lot better, but it has a lot more options than say a third party reverb that you might run into. Um, but it's kind of your job to put those options there. Now there is a lot of great presets for the reverb. Um, so you don't have to learn how to do all that stuff if you don't want to, but uh, the option is there if you want it. And then again, you can save all of this as a preset. Um, you can even save the polysim with that in it as a preset. And you can get it in your browser. You can look up Weird Reverb 69, and there it is, okay? Um, the other thing that I want to touch on is the instruments. So uh, I can't go through and talk about how every effect in Bitwig is great because there, there, there are so many that are, but the, the EQ is really phenomenal. I mean, let me just show, just really quickly, let me just show you the power that Bitwig has in terms of the modulators and the inbuilt effects and why it's really, really, really underrated. So let's get an EQ up here from our effects, okay? Um, and let's just get the Bitwig EQ. So I've got my EQ up here and let's just put a bit of sound through it. So let's, um, let's open up a polysynth preset. Uh, let's add this, see what this sounds like. Probably want something with a bit more sustain, so let's look for something. That's probably fine. Okay, so let's turn that down. Actually, that's a bit bright, let me just... Okay, so now we've got this. And let's say that we've got a drum groove in here. So let me just get one of my drum loops that I made. Um, let's take out a chord. And let's add this glitch kit thing. And let's add that here. Turn that down a bit as well. Don't like the pluck on the polysynth. Okay, so now we've got this little thing, whatever. So now I've got my EQ and I can EQ as regular, you know. Um, you know, I can take out some low end or whatever I want. But let's say that every time I had a kick come in, I wanted it to high pass this. So what I can do is I can take an audio side chain or an audio rate modulator, or whatever I want. There's a million things that you can do, but let's for now just try and high pass it. 
So now let me take uh, from my drum machine, let me go to my kick and go from the sampler up from the kick, right? And let's just take the attack of the kick here, the high part. And let's boost that up a bit, just so we get a bit more modulation out of it. So now every time that I get a kick, we're gonna get this to high pass. Right, and let's add another one. Uh, sorry, an audio sidechain. And let's take that from the snare. So the snare here, let's go from the sampler out. Let's just take the whole snare. Let's see where the snare is, is most active. So it's most active here at about, I don't know, what's that, like 150 hertz, 200 hertz, something like that, 178 or so. So let's take that snare. And let's add another point here and get the snare to reduce the decibels here. Right? So now every time the kick hits, it's going to take out all the bass. It's, uh, by the way, I've never set it up like this. Even if you are going to, you know, take out frequencies, you want to do it like super subtly. But I'm just showing you for example. So, um, and then let's say, you know, you had a vocal. So let's bring in something from a vocal on another track. Let's just add a vocal here. I'm sure I have a, I'm sure I have a vocal clip here somewhere. Okay, that's out of key. So let's just need a book. We've got the vocal there. And let's take that vocal. And let's say we want this to track, you know, just the, just around 1K on the vocal where the vocal's presence is. And every time that vocal comes in, let's just bring down the rise and fall a bit so it happens a bit quicker. Every time that vocal comes in, let's just bring down the overall volume of this uh, clip. So you can hear when the, vo when the vocal comes in, it reduces the volume. So it's getting out of the way of the, the vocal. Now, let's say that we wanted to just do that on the mid. So let's get a mid side container here. Whoops. Let's get a mid side split. And let's just put this in the mid so that it's not affecting the side. Right? So super powerful what you can do with the effects in that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I want to show you for the effects. Um, you can do some crazy stuff with it. As far as the instruments go, all the instruments are great. Uh, the standout are phase four here. Phase four is, let me just get rid of all this. Uh, phase four is a phase distortion synth, very similar to FM. You've got like uh, four oscillators here that can all modulate each other. It's got a great sound and filter. You can stereoize this oscillator. So in terms of, um, in terms of usability, you look at a synth like this and you initially think it's quite simple. Um, the thing is though, is that, yeah, this is like a, a kind of like a four operator FM synth in a way. Um, but you can modulate these ratios with say a step sequencer that you have here and you could have a separate one that's like doing a polyrhythm that's going on the volume. And then you could have two ADSR envelopes that are, you know, say changing the filter FM that's coming from stuff. And then you could have effects in here with, you know, three more filters that are running in parallel. Uh, that you can set up in one of the containers and those can be affected by the same stuff that's affecting the synth and then you can hook stuff up to you know an xy pad that hooks up to this and control stuff from this in the xy pad and you can control your effects and you can have all of that stuff happening in a preset that you can save and use whenever you want so that's really the power of bitwig um the other thing that i want to point out really quickly is i'm not going to go too deep into the grid but I want to talk a little bit about the grid because obviously 
this is probably one of the primary selling points for Bitwig. So let's have a look at the grid and what the grid is capable of. So in terms of just while I'm opening this up, in terms of stuff like side chaining, um, EQ and things with different tracks, one of my favorite things about Bitwig is how you can take audio from anywhere and do anything with it. You know, you can have a controller, a, a phaser or an EQ and you might say, why would you want to do that? And a lot of the times you probably wouldn't, but if you need to do it, you can do it in about three seconds. Um, and it's, you know, super impressive. You can use the grid to um, audio rate modulate anything uh, that's in Bitwig, any parameter at all. Um, that's one of the, the, my favorite things about it is you can have a whole bunch of complex synthesis that's happening in the grid and you can use that to FM a filter cutoff that's at the end of your vocal. Um, in terms of synthesis in the grid, I'm not going to get too deep into this. The, the synthesis possibilities are pretty insane. So you've got all these different oscillators here. So we have triangle, we have this phase one oscillator and they're all basically different algorithms. This one has feedback. You can use these to FM each other. Uh, so you can have like, you know, as many oscillators as you want here that are FM in each other. Um, you can have them all at different ratios. And then you can have those, you know, all going through some sort of a mixer here. So let's plug them all into a mixer. And then that's all FMing your main oscillator which is also being FM'd by, I'm not gonna make a sound here, but, um, which is also being FM'd by this sampler, which you've dragged a, let's say a snare into. Nice, nice spelling of snare there. So you've dragged like a snare sample into here and you've gone to cycles mode and turned that into a wavetable. So if you freeze that, this then becomes a wavetable that you can play. And all of that stuff can be, you know, FM and one oscillator, or they can all be mixed together or whatever you want. And then this is being controlled by not only all the modulators you have here, but by the LFOs that you have in here. Um, you can do insane types of like distorting the waveform. So like you can, you know, mimic FM or shift the phase. You can, you know, bend the phase signal that's coming through here. You can all have a bunch of different filters here in parallel that you can hook up to each other if you want. And you can have audio coming in to control all of that stuff um, over time. It's pretty much limitless what you can do in the grid. And all of this stuff can also be used as an effect. You can make your own reverbs in here. You can make your own really complicated delay lines in here. Um, again, the grid requires an entire video to talk about, but you know, you can make pretty much anything that you want in here. You can even use this to set up, which I'm sort of in the middle of doing. You can use this to set up like pretty advanced, like uh, loop and setups for live use. Uh, you can use it to set up uh, you know, you've got all sorts of logic. So you've got lots of logic in here. So you can have, you know, you can create your own like really complicated drum replacers, um, that analyze the frequency range of incoming audio and only in certain situations when say the kick and the hi-hat hit at the same time, will it play a sample? You can do all of that stuff in here and it's, uh, it's pretty insane. I will make another video on the grid because to try and cover everything that you can do with the grid, talking about it in, you know, a, a, a three or four minute segment of a video would be a ridiculous concept, but the grid is is pretty unprecedented as far as, as, as a synthesizer within a DAW goes. And the fact that we are, you know, two point updates into version three when this came out, means that this is in its infancy. You know, this is this is the start of the grid. You know, I would like to see stuff like um, maybe being able to bring some VSTs and stuff in here. Um, the, the, the only real thing that I would like to see is uh, being able to save a bunch of, like say if I had this whole setup here, if I could save that as a, as like a node that I could just drag into any preset and have like little node presets. I'm sure they'll add that, but. 
um, the, the, the possibilities, possibilities are completely are limitless, limitless with, with, with the grid. The grid so. so, yeah, yeah. That, that is the end of, I didn't even talk about the sampler. sampler. Um, the, the sampler is insane. insane. Again, yeah, it's just, just stuff I'm going to have to make a separate video about, about but... Uh, these, uh, these are the things, things that I really like about Bitwig. Bitwig. There's, There's a thousand, thousand things, things I, I missed. I didn't, I didn't even talk about voice stacking. I didn't, I didn't even talk about most of the effects that I love. I didn't talk about the sampler, which, which is my absolute, absolute favorite instrument within Bitwig. Bitwig. Um, but you've got access to that in the grid. You can turn stuff into wavetables. You can do granular synthesis with it. Um, you can stack a bunch of these in the grid with um, you know different logic stuff like that. Um, and create, you know, really intricate, like, uh, say, kick instruments, you know, where you can build your own kicks or snares that work, like, and change over time based on, you know, how the music is playing or stuff like that. It's crazy what you can do with this. But I'm going to stop talking now because I've talked for a long time. And I think that you get that I like Bitwig. Uh, if you liked the video, please subscribe. Um, let, Let me know, know if, if there's anything, anything that you want me to go into, into detail, detail with. This, this is basically just me ranting about how much I like Bitwig. Bitwig. Yeah, yeah, I probably, I probably forgot, forgot so much stuff that I wanted to talk about. about but yeah, yeah that's, that's basically a video about things that I love in Bitwig and why I use it. Thanks, thanks for watching. watching. See you See next time. time.